Okay, guys, here at the super secret shop. <laughs> I will not mention the name or the individual who's working on the lathe at the moment, helping us out with this project. Um, but he's a very good friend of mine. We owe him a lot. Today we are building a prosthetic leg for a dog. Little Bichon Free's got his hind feet cut off in a puppy mill. So we're using a high ABS plastic. It's the same plastic I use on my knife handles. We've got our dimensions down, all of our drawings, and me and the super secret superhero over here that we've discussed, we're not going to say his name, um, have got all of our stuff kind of figured out here. So first off on the lathe, we got to face this off. And just so we got a clean edge to work with. and repeat just to make sure you got a good edge and do the same on the other side and we'll set up for the hole to be punched for the socket be right back with you okay guys dropping the guard in place this is just a safety precaution and I'll get back out of his way we're gonna have to drill this out to about two inch depth for the socket and splint and everything You'll kind of see how this all works out here at the end, but just using the gauge on the tailstock itself to get us at two inches. And we'll get right back with you. Okay, now this part we're just truing up the outside. Because like with most materials, once you get it drilled, you never get it dead center. total length on this needs to be about two and a half so we're just truing up about that much and then we can cut it off okay now we're just cutting her off we're going just a hair over two and a half inches so that gives a little extra to play with if we need it so right now what he's doing he's holding a piece of metal in the center to make sure it doesn't walk while we cut it. Try to make sure that it cuts square up like we need it. And there we go. Cut and clean. Couldn't ask for better. So this is what we're looking at for a prosthetic dog leg or dog paw actually. This will be a below, what's called a bilateral below hock replacement. Um, I think it should be pretty interesting once we get it all done here. So all we got to do now is make a duplicate of this. Easy huh? Okay guys what I got to do now is check my depth. So for that take a pair of calipers Set it up here, plunge in, find your true depth. Now, I just take this and mark every so often until I come up with this. That tells me how much of a solid plug I've got to the very inside base of that. Because keep in mind a drill bit isn't going to cut flat. It's going to leave a angle in there for whatever distance the drill bit. The bigger the drill bit, the more of an angle, the deeper the angle. So I'll get this marked out. Both of them left a small tit on them from when we cut them off with, on the lathe. I'll get rid of those, dress this up just a touch, and on the inside just a touch. Just put a slight chamfer or bevel on the inside here. Um, and we'll go from there. Okay guys, basically what I got here is a thin strap of steel. Um, I was going to go with aluminum, but it just kept breaking. I couldn't get it to bend right. So, that is 
the synthetic paw there. So what I have to do is, now this is flat and this is flat, these have to be bent around. So the best way to do that is just start the bend over the edge here like this on both sides. Just tap down with your hammer on both sides of the vise. Get a bend started, set it in the vise, and just get it bent and work it all the way up. All the way back in here to the crease. And then you start the same thing here on this one. Then you can tap it to shape on this. And what you end up with is something that looks like this. So that hind paw should be at a slight angle there, just because that's how a dog's paw looks. So let's get this other one bent up and drilled and put together and go from there. Okay guys, here's what we wound up with last night. Um, apologize for not shooting a little more of this while we were there at the shop, but kind of started getting crunched for time and had to get this done. So. But there they are, that's with the metal brackets, just those thin steel pieces. Um, seems like this is for a real small dog, those should be fine. A little heavier than I wanted them to be, but um, these will work. So now I just gotta, I've already ran through a drill press here on these to get a hole all the way through. Um, so now it's a matter of finding bolts that'll fit and cranking them down. Then the whole thing will get dipped in and rubber. But before that, I'll cut slits down this way to remove a chunk in the front and in back. So you'll basically have little splints coming up the sides here. So plastic splints. Um, it'll allow for a better range of motion on the dog, but still have some stability. And also there'll be like a rubber booty that I'll have to build that goes around these. Um, also to give him a little extra stability, so. Well, there we go from that point. And let me get back to work on them. Okay guys, so here's the foot. We've got it bolted. I used a brass bolt so it won't rust or corrode. Um, and a nylon lock thread nut. Once I got the bolt through, I still had about that much extra. So I just cut it off with a pair of dikes, filed it down real quick to break any sharp edges. Then on the inside, if you notice, it's got a black dot in there. That black dot is this material. This is a very squishy neoprene foam rubber. Um, a small sheet of it here was donated to Stray Rescue and I will find the individuals here. Okay, so here we got the foot um, bolted through. I used a just a brass bolt, 632 bolt. Um, went with a nickel plate nylon lock nut so it won't back off because, I mean, as the dog walks, it's going to bounce and vibrate and just a standard washer I didn't think was going to hold up to that. Um, cut the excess bolt off, filed down any sharp edges gently peened it over with a hammer. Um, then inside here, you can see that black spot which wasn't there before. That is roughly a quarter sized chunk of padding and the padding is cut from this material here. Um, this is a sheet, it's a uh, quarter inch density but it is very 
very squishy, um, very nice and padded. So for the little stubs of his feet, hence the name stubs, <coughs> um, he'll be able to have a little padding in there so it won't just rest on that. And also keep in mind that the drill, whenever the drill goes in, and I believe I mentioned this earlier, but a drill doesn't drill flat, okay? It's going to taper in like that, and then it's going to come up, okay? No drill bit is going to drill flat off. Now, if I'd use an end mill, sure. So we've already got a little concave in here to kind of help follow the natural shape of his paw of what's left there. So that'll actually, that's actually an advantage in this case. So there we've got that. Now I just need to wrap it with neoprene. Um, and the neoprene I'll be wrapping it with is this material here. Um, this was also donated by the same company that donated the foam sheeting. Um, they're both, technically they're both neoprenes. Um, they're just different purities, I guess, is what you would say. This is just a real high tensile strength, very elastic, very strong stuff that I can use to uh, form a little boot to come up around his leg.